<laughs> and and I'm going to tweet at uh, Chuck the Squirrel at the Planetary Science Institute, and uh, hopefully we'll get Bug Girl in here as well. Yeah, I've sent them invites and emails, uh, so I know um, we're five minutes early right now. Bug emailed saying she was on her way, uh, and then I think uh, Andy, the Squirrel Chuck thing. Uh, hi, Emily. Hi. How are you? I'm here. I'm more rested than you. <laughs> <laughs> Most people are at this point. I was yeah. comparing it to being at 16,000 feet uh, in Chile and, and having no oxygen. This is kind of what it felt like. My brain's just, the neurons are a little slow on the firing. <laughs> So, so while we wait, we uh, received two new videos um, from our folks over at Death by Puppets Death that we, by puppets. we haven't had a chance to watch yet. Uh -oh. So um, I'm going to try and find where the downloads window went and subject all of you to puppets because puppets. Emily, I don't know if you caught that segment. But you have to go back and watch it. Which one? The uh, Death by Puppets slash uh, Astronomical Pancake segment. <laughs> I definitely need to watch that one. <laughs> Very early in the morning, uh, Rebecca Watson got out of bed to make us planetary pancakes. Well, make planetary pancakes, which she then ate on camera in front of us. <laughs> and then we had uh, all kinds of, of puppets and puppeteers. It was, uh, it was epic. And someone actually came into the YouTube uh, page and commented, so what am I watching? <laughs> and we spent the entire hour trying to answer that and didn't <laughs> we failed. <laughs> <laughs> like, doesn't matter, it's awesome. This uh, is why I love puppet people. <laughs> yes, they're fantastic. Oh, and, and Ryan's back. Another Mad Art Labber. Uh, Ryan, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter, made us a uh, Werner von Brunn all the way down new cosmology that uh, Amy Shear Dital patented. So <laughs> basically, lately I've discovered that whenever I say, hey, hey Internet, make me something artistic, um, Ryan or one of the other Mad Art Labbers comes up and, and makes it. And it's <laughs> Although I have to say, I'm quite saddened that we've been challenging on a regular basis everyone out there to create uh, cards against astronomy cards. And no one is doing this. So we can yeah. do that. Yes, I'm we want a cards that. against astronomy game that we can play the last hour when we are most punch drunk on lack of sleep. But mm. for now, we are going to watch a quick Death by Puppets video that we haven't seen yet that I've been dying to watch. Greetings, fellow travelers on this cosmic spaceship. Our Savior approve of this science. <laughs> That's awesome. Very and cute. and we have an almost bug girl. We have an avatar of a bug girl. Are we? Are, do we have another video? Um. Yeah. Hold on. I'm trying to find it. So if puppet Carl Sagan tells you to donate to Cosmo Quest. You, you know you her. need to donate to CosmoQuest yeah. at uh, CosmoQuest.org slash donate. <laughs> Bug says she is so confused. I don't know if that's at the setup or at the puppets. <laughs> um, confusion is natural in what we are creating today. We have one more Death by Puppets video. Hello, it is I, Dr. Sam. I approve of this science. Evil science! <laughs> or just science. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! And, and I think this is an excellent entry point to our next segment, uh, which is... Um, Bug has to get in a costume. Uh, I think we had another... We, we may have had another time zone mix-up. Sorry, Bug. Oh, sorry, Bug. Um, <laughs> so, um, so this segment is uh, about uh, basically alternative means of afflicting science on others. Um, the weird and wonderful. Uh, I should have asked Ray to join us with his 501st. I just thought of Ray that. Ray Sanders, if you're hearing this, you're welcome in. in. in costume. <laughs> or just bring your helmet. Bring the helmet at least. Uh, Richard Drum has updated us on the total. We have 14,254 donations in the box. 
Uh, can we get to 20,000 today? Ooh, can we do that? Can we do that? We can at least make it to the Feed Joe amount of 15,000. I think we can easily do that. In fact, we can do that with this segment, guys. So let's, let's yes. pull it out. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> so, but for those of you who weren't here earlier, uh, Joe is one of our programmers. He's a graduate student. Um, we live in the middle of the country, which means graduate students are paid fifteen thousand a year, and then the university pays his tuition. Um, and he eats a lot of ramen, and I take him out to eat on a regular basis. Um, help us get to at least the level of feeding Joe. Um, if we can surpass that. Joe buys his own computer for this job. Um, yeah. Joe's computer died, and Joe is now using his old computer, which he yells at. Um, Joe is a grumpy old curmudgeon in a young 25-year-old body. Um, help us help Joe help you do awesome science. So let's see if we can hit $20,000 and hit the Feed Joe mark. Um, and uh, you know, if we can hit twenty thousand dollars, that's enough to do two one-week teacher workshops. That is enough to do two major trips. That is, there's a whole lot that we can do with that type of money. Um, it's twelve fifty an hour for a student. It's uh, fifteen hundred dollars per person to go on a major trip. It's two thousand dollars to run a teacher training workshop. Um, and that includes paying the teachers for their time so they can afford child care and transportation. Um, so we are now fully loaded with bug. Uh, who are you dressed at as Emily? Oh, no. You're no, muted. No audio. We lost Emily's audio. No, we see lips moving, no audio. Is your is your little red button red? Okay, we also have Andy Shaner. Andy, do you have Chuck's head? <laughs> oh, yes, I have Chuck's head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my squirrel! God, it's the big squirrel. Oh, it's, like, it's your little brother. <laughs> Is your little brother Cat and Chuck McFluffer butt? Uh, apparently, yes. <laughs> and this this head is as big as it looks too. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I have seen you doing video interviews in a <laughs> suit and that head with gloves that give you furry hands. Yeah, and I think um, I have the feet on too. I yeah. have, I have I actually did not know you were actually Chuck until like yesterday. So Well, I'm not the only Chuck cuz it turns oh, out okay. and that's that's part of his his personality is that he has multiple personalities oh my gosh <laughs> so so you are actually a NASA funded squirrel <laughs> yes so I'm... could you tell us the history on how you became one of the men behind Chuck oh it was uh, what, what, what do you what do you call that uh, serendipity uh, <laughs> no so so <laughs> Uh, so, by the way, Lunar Planetary Institute, Pamela, not 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 PSI. Uh, okay. Oh, gotta, you're right. Sorry. I just got to make sure I say that. Not that there's anything wrong with PSI. I have great friends at PSI. But, yeah, uh, it, Houston versus Tucson. <laughs> right. Somebody just gave $100, Richard said. Yay, Fantastic. Yay, we don't know who you are yet, but yay. <laughs> so, Chuck uh, came about because my uh, LPI has a, my, a, a, a website called My Moon. It's been around for about four years now, and in the beginning there was a. Um, so the the whole website is basically the homepage looks like a scene from a city street. It's actually images of buildings from downtown Houston, and at the beginning there was a a silo a silhouette of a squirrel sitting on a power line, and early on in the web and we had this little bubble speech bubble, and they would just say these really snarky things. And early on the website, it was the most popular part of the website. So never mind, there's all this like really cool lunar information in the site. People love to play with this squirrel. And so we thought, well, let's see if we can take advantage of that. And the guy who was our original programmer for the site um, thought we should buy a squirrel costume and take this costume out into the public and use it to promote the website. And so we did it a few times. Uh, the, the, uh, the squirrel interviewed scientists at LPSC. Um, 
which Pamela was just referring to. Uh, there's some great exhibits. For example, there's a, you see that poster on the left where there's like two squirrels, like they're getting ready to box each other. That's a fantastic uh, virtual exhibit about uh, debunking moon landing conspiracies. And Phil Plate was part of that. Oh, Phil absolutely was. Yeah, we did a webcast with Phil. Does he need a squirrel costume? No. No. He doesn't need a squirrel costume. Um, he was, yeah, we did a webcast with Phil on talking about uh, conspiracy people with the moon and, and everything, and uh, we took some clips of that webcast and in incorporated it into the uh, exhibit. So that's that, that was fun. That that was fun uh, using the squirrel for that. Uh, we took him to South by Southwest in 2010 and walked around. Uh, boy, that got attention. Uh, that and the big lime green bowl that uh, we kind of got into a fight with and played Foursquare with, actually, on the on the sidewalk. Uh, <laughs> so that's where that's where Chuck came from. Um, he, and he's just kind of become uh, the mascot for that website. Um, he's furry. He's he's fun. Not really fun to wear. Well, the little the little Chuck is a nice little conversation piece when you're walking around taking pictures at uh, an observatory <laughs> or a conference. Uh, the little mascots I found are a great way to get people to ask, "What's that? And what's that for?" And you can talk about your project. So absolutely, that's always cool. Uh, we have uh, bug in antennas here. Um, I can't hear you either. Uh, I haven't said go. anything. Hi. Hey. <laughs> So, Bug Girl, Bug G member Sid, <laughs> tell us a little bit about your antennas here and uh, what you do and, and a little bit about costuming. Well, I had not actually tried being interviewed in the antennae before, and so I'm running into a problem where I have to kind of roll. Uh, my studio is in my attic. Uh, you can kind of see that my uh, roof is sloped. <laughs> Yeah, we're having so that I, too. I can't actually move farther back from the camera than this. <laughs> so, so yes, yeah, so you can have antennae or my face or, you know, so, but I, you, you get the general idea anyway. Um, so I'm an entomologist and I also have been part of the skeptics for a really long time. Holy cow, since uh, I think I was one of the original batch. Um, back when it was actually a zine. <laughs> remember zines? Or just Any zine? other people there old enough to remember what a zine was? Uh, I was young and I thought they were cool, but yes. <laughs> uh, and so we, I basically got kind of suckered in because they, I was interested in skepticism and applying um, critical thinking more than anything else. Uh, and my particular bent happens to be, I'm an entomologist, I'm interested in bugs and bug issues. And so I got suckered into going to a science fiction convention, which is fine by me because I love sci-fi. Like you do. Uh, and it was a blast. It was a total blast. And, and parallel to that, I also do a lot of online things. Um, and so I have really been a fan of trying to get away from sort of our traditional model of science communication, which is, I know a lot of stuff. Let me tell you all the stuff I know. Whether you really want to know that or not, I'm going to tell you. Um, and so, so experts making decisions about, this is what you need to know. When it makes much more sense to me, and this may be because of my agricultural background, for people to come to me and say, this is what I would like to know. These are the problems that I'm having. These are my issues. These are the things that make me really curious. Answer my questions. Um, and so the session that I normally sit in on, although I've done some other ones, is usually an Ask a Scientist mm -hmm. session. And it's basically, it is ask me anything. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, we get many, many questions that are just kind of like, okay, you asked that in public with a microphone. Alrighty then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take a stab at it. <laughs> um, and so, so it's a lot of fun, but it also reminds me that, you know what, I need to get out of my office more. Um, and the things that I think are important are not necessarily things that anyone else thinks are important. Um, and so that's the, the long-winded answer of why I'm sitting here in my attic in antennae. 
This is and, the full costume, a picture of the full costume that we're screen sharing. I think this is from Sio yeah. 13. Yeah, probably. So this is back in January when both <laughs> Emily and Bug Girl uh, were doing a session on costuming for science. Essentially, you had a better name for it. Out, sorry, outreach in unusual places. Yes. Uh, which, yeah. given some of the questions I get, is an appropriate title, actually. Um, but the the other thing I find, and, and the thing that I love about being in costume, um, I have a big, I'm not in it because, again, I'm in the attic. It's freaking hot. Forget it. I'm sorry. I love you guys. I do not love you enough to put on a polar fleece, giant, fluffy green suit oh. in June in the attic. It's all good. So, We're okay so. with it. <laughs> My love I has love limits. Um, but... But the thing is, when I am dressed like a big fluffy green insect, everybody talks to me. And so but when people hear you're a PhD entomologist <laughs> in a fluffy green suit. Well, it's well so the thing is without the fluffy green suit, PhD entomologist scary. In a fluffy green suit, puffy green uh, entomologist with a PhD is warm and fuzzy and huggable. Yeah, yeah, I, I do actually get a lot of people that want to pet me. Um, and, and, and generally, never that pet petting, bugs. yeah, petting is not a thing. But I mean, the other thing too is, it if what the conversation that you're having is about things that people get really, really uptight about pesticides, genetically mm -hmm. modified organisms. Those are things that are really strongly emotionally charged, and having an emotionally charged conversation with a giant green fluffy bug is kind of impossible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it makes it, it's, it's basically kind of makes everybody go, okay, let's, let's kind of roll with it. Let's, let's chill a little bit. And so you can have a conversation about pesticides and chemicals and talk a little bit about, well, really, you know, it's, it's a choice and, and, you know, there's chemicals and everything and blah, 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 blah. Um, but it, it basically lowers the barrier for that conversation to happen. Um, and I mean, one of the things I, I wrote about, because um, I, I just now finally got around to publishing the work, <laughs> a write-up of our session, um, but when I'm wearing that, it's, it's not just the con that I'm talking to. So um, one of the pictures I posted was me sitting on the bus in the green fluffy suit with the yeah. antennae. Um, and, and I'm on the bus, so I'm talking to the bus driver, the taxi drivers, the people on the bus. So it's, it basically broadens your audience. Um, and it, it gives people permission to come up and ask you questions. And, and I, I know, Emily, you, uh, you are one of the most amazing costumers I know. Yes. You have, yeah, we, we all just are, we bow down before your costuming ability. And you had this great story at Science Online about your Bat Girl, which was not bat as in the Marvel com or DC. Oh crud! I can't remember, and I know that's a really just <laughs> war. Um, oh, are you getting not letters now? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I've been awake for a long time. I'm allowed to forget one detail. Yes. Um, but but it it was the the actual small fuzzy mammal costume. Um, and and tell can you tell our audience that story about why you dress up as a bat? <laughs> You're muted. Oh no! no. Audio. Oh. Take your audio, the little gray gear, um, and and check the audio settings hmm. there. Worst case scenario is, of course, to refresh. Um, yeah, I, I remember watching a, an episode of Doctor Who and seeing a gorgeous red dress and thinking, oh, that would be so cool as a costume. And then, uh, like, two minutes later, I go on Facebook and Emily is already designing. <laughs> this is, like, the red dress from... This was River's red dress. No, it was... No, um, it was a different red dress? It's the, what's her name? Brain Broken, the Impossible Girl, her first episode. Oh. Or no, her, her second episode, yes. yes. Oh, yeah, uh, her, damn it. Brain. <laughs> See, and I don't even have being up all night as an excuse. You guys are yelling at me. The person who was a companion for only one season. The ha yeah, the last half season. Uh, Emily, ref you can always try refreshing the Hangout. Sometimes that kicks things back into gear. Clara. Um, Clara. Clara, thank you. Clara Oswin Oswald. Uh, yeah, she was wearing that red dress and the Victorian era dress. 
Uh, and yeah, she was yes. sketching it out, and I'm sure she'll have it done for Dragon Con if it's not done already. So. Yes. <laughs> okay. You're and, just back. Uh, even... okay? Can I hear you? No. No. Ah. So go into the gear. Yeah. And make sure, so like one, one thing I've, I've sabotaged Nicole with before is the microphones have on-off buttons. I don't know if your mic might have an on-off button that is plaguing you. I just, we heard you when you first came in, so there's something. Does, that, oh. does this work? Yes! Yay! 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 Sorry to shout into my microphone, everyone. Uh, apparently my computer has three built-in input selections to wow. which you take. Gotcha. So, it's one of them. Yeah. Oh. Um, well, my Batgirl, but I don't remember which Batgirl story I was telling because I've, I spent seven years teaching about small fuzzy mammals. Tell us a Batgirl story. A Batgirl story. Um, well, I started, uh, when I started teaching about the small fuzzy mammals, you're, you are the girl in the cage with the bats, which people are terrified of. Um, so you have seven bats flying around your head. And people start calling you the bat girl, the bat woman, the bat lady as you walk around the museum. So when I first, when I finished my bat girl costume, I thought, what do I do? I go to the museum center. I put on my bat costume and I go to the bat cage with my small fuzzy mammals. And I found out that people are much more willing to talk about the things that frighten them to the girl in purple spandex with the small fuzzy mammals than they are to talk to the scary scientist, well, science communicator with the small fuzzy mammals. I don't know why, but it was it was a draw and I got much better questions, um, much more interesting questions. They were willing to ask things that they would have felt stupid to ask in and other situations. So. And what I love listening to the three of you is this overall theme of I can make science approachable by dressing in a fuzzy or spandexy or otherwise um, dehumanizing um, costume. <laughs> that well, I, well, or rehumanizing. Yeah, rehumanizing. Scientists aren't always humanized by our society. Yes. Yes. Um, so whether you're creating a persona of Carl Sagan or Bill Nye or Bug Girl in a small fuzzy green costume, you're still you're creating a connection in a way that someone's going to go PhD entomologist scary. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to talk to that bug over there. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. and Oh, and this Go goes back to the old joke of if, if you're on an airplane and the person next to you asks you what you do and you're an astronomer, if you think they might be worth talking to, you lie. Um, so I'll say I'm a writer. Um, if you think that they might maybe not be terrible but you really want to not get engaged, you say you're an astronomer. And if you want them to go away, you say you're an astrophysicist. It's true. It's true. <laughs> It just binged at us. Something binged at us. That was I binged. Noise. I'm sorry. <laughs> so we have uh, so uh, Bug Emily and I are going to be at uh, Convergence really soon. I think all three of us are going to be there. Yeah. So you guys got to help me come up with an approachable astronomer costume. I'm not very good at this costume thing. Uh, just so to be Twilight Sparkle. I love Twilight Sparkle. She's my favorite pony. So if I do that, and then maybe with a, like a. <laughs> A get a, or something? get a purple dress. I will lend you the wig. I have a horn. Okay, I, I can do that. She I've has a star to... cutie mark. Come on. I've been... That's why I love her. She's an astronomer and a skeptic. Sorry. An astronomer and a skeptic, and she has anxiety, and that's why Twilight yes. Sparkle is my favorite pony. And the moment of brony has happened. <laughs> the moment? There's only been one in this hangout. I'm, there was a passing mention earlier. This is only the second My Little Pony reference. <laughs> So, okay. well, but I, I was going to say, we, we need to steampunk a Galileo scope. Did you do that? We, we got halfway done and never okay. finished. <laughs> I can, I'm actually ooh. working on, for a future convention, a Science with Twilight Sparkle program. So for kids <laughs> doing, a, doing things that tie into the <laughs> episode conversations, <laughs> doing science experiments as Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> I think you need to get Nicole a bag to breathe in, too. 
Um, so, so Andy, where do you wear the, like I said, I've, I've talked to you and met you uh, at conferences, but I haven't seen you wear the squirrel costume yet. So where do you do the squirrel costume? Is this for videos or is this out and about in public and, and doing outreach? Bars. Uh, well, it's, 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 it's <laughs> bars would be a hoot. Uh, <laughs> It, I guess it actually was supposed to be for both. Originally, we started doing it walking around, talking to people. Um, but, you know, we live in Houston, and there's only a few months out of the year where you can want to wear this thing outside. Oh, yeah. So I kind of I think I think just kind of out of necessity and without really saying it, we just decided to do things inside with it, and we turned it towards uh, using it, like for, like, for those online exhibits on my moon, and... Whenever we'd have a contest, we'd use him to promote a contest. Um, if you can dig through the My Moon YouTube channel, you can see a um, see a, a video we made. Where we're promoting a, a Mooney or a Money challenge. You know those little plastic figures that you decorate and whatever um, with the squirrel. That's pretty funny uh, in, in itself too. But no, we just it's just not comfortable, and it's you know it's not made for somebody who's six three. Um, <laughs> Because there's also like a jumpsuit that's the body part, and you know when you have a long torso, it's really uncomfortable. And and let's face it, there's a very fine line between warm, warm, fuzzy, happy person in costume and stinky, rank person in costume. And all of us that go to science fiction cons know one of them you avoid. <laughs> so so we respect your we respect your life choice. Yeah, you know it's it's fun to do when you're with people who are responding to it. Mm -hmm. um, when, we, when we when we were walking around LPSC, the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference with it, right after we got it, it was the, the best part of the night was the first 30 seconds when we walked in the poster hall and like anybody who saw you within reach of the door ran out the door. Oh my they God. got these huge eyes like, oh my God, what is that? And they <laughs> ran out the door. This is a conference full of scientists. Yes. And they don't know is. what to do. <laughs> and they were suddenly afraid you are going to make them interact. <laughs> well, and, and it does, I guess it doesn't help that we had a camera person following us, and I'm holding a microphone. But uh, but yeah. the, the ones that we did talk to were a lot of fun. And we, we, we kind of warned them we were coming ahead of time. Um, but they didn't know when. So it was still fun to see their, to see their surprise. So, so it, I, I love the contradiction here of what uh, breaks down the barriers to science with the public builds the barriers <laughs> for the scientists. <laughs> but, but this seems to be the theme that all three of you have introduced is, is science is by and large uh, approach to something that's somewhat scary. And mm -hmm. To create a scientifically literate society, we need to break down that wall and, and get people to understand that science is amazing. And each of you have embraced your inner costumer. And, and <laughs> like, like Nicole, I've been working to try and come up with a costume. For me, I've been trying to put together the steampunk astronomer, um, but keep running short on time to do metalworking. Um, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so what has been I think your greatest win so far and something that you were able to accomplish as a costumed science communicator that you're not sure you could have accomplished uh, in, in your muggle apparel <laughs> uh, oh well okay well I'll, I'll jump in <laughs> Go for it. Um, you know, I think it's really not the costume so much as it is um, making a connection. And that connection can be both virtual or in real life. It's more fun in real life, um, but it works online too. I mean, there's a lot of people who are really disoriented when they meet me for the first time because they're expecting me to be blue. Um, which is the way my avatar looks. And um, I love that concept. <laughs> Wait, you're not blue. Yeah. No. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, they have this, this mental image of me as this cartoon bug person. Um, and 
I think it's really just that level of personal connection so that I can find out what is relevant to you. Um, and so instead of me wandering in, I mean, if what I did was I had my suit on and I walked around saying, let me tell you about bug XYZ, I would be pretty annoying. Um, but by, by waiting for people to come to me and ask questions, that's the difference. Um, because otherwise I would be no different from, you know, the, the poor guy down the street from me that dresses up like the Statue of Liberty and tries to give everybody flyers about the bank. Um, <laughs> you know, that's, that's not cool. That's just creepy. <laughs> so so I, I have to admit, we do stalk people with science here at CosmoQuest now and then. Uh, one of the things that we do is we go to the science fiction cons and we look for people waiting in line, whether they're waiting <laughs> for William Shatner's signature, they're waiting uh, for all manner of actors and actresses' signatures, they're waiting to get into the Mythbusters panel, they're sitting there bored, mm -hmm. tired, hungry because it's a con and there's never any time to eat and we approach them with science and and we're kind of like a dealer hey the first hit is free do you want to try and mark a crater and it's it, it, it is true <laughs> <laughs> and, and what we find is if you do approach people in this moment of bored vulnerability <laughs> um, they will often say yes. So far I've only had one person turn me down. This was at South by Southwest. Uh, there is someone waiting uh, at the bus stop. He was not engaged in his cell phone. I walked up to him while he was waiting for the bus. I said, hi, would you like to try some science? And he looked at me and went, no. <laughs> I just it was the first no I'd gotten. And I just couldn't figure out how I had so deeply offended him. And it was just now he was in a different headspace. But you may have heard something else. I don't know. Don't know. That's true, actually. Yeah. Well, I think my. I mean, maybe it's a euphemism for something in Austin. I don't know. <laughs> I think my biggest win hasn't been um, science in, okay, sorry, my can't, computer just did a strange thing. Am I still on this? Yes, you are. Yes, sorry, you are. Okay. that was my computer. Oh, all things okay. Going in, it's fine. Um, well, my, my biggest win as uh, doing science in costume hasn't been towards the public because I've been doing science outreach for over a decade, mostly not in costume. So it's all stuff, all the stuff I do in costume, I would do not in costume as well. But it does shorten the lead up, it shortens the lead up time. It, it may, takes that first paragraph and cuts it out because you don't have to justify your presence because you're already there, you're already a weirdo. So they're willing to listen to you talk about something out of their normal thing. My biggest one has actually been talking to other cosplayers. I used to yes. have two separate personas online. One was a science communicator, mostly on Twitter. One was a costumer, mostly on Facebook. Um, and I decided a couple years ago to integrate those two and bring science over to Facebook. Um, and the biggest response, I, biggest surprising response I've ever had was getting other cosplayers and other fandom people interested in science because they did not realize I did this stuff. They did not, they had, they were, utterly surprised when I'd link something that, say, Bug Girl or Carl Zimmer wrote. They'd be like, where did you find this? Like, the internet? Where all the science lives? <laughs> like, I'm just bringing it to you. But they, they continue to respond, and new people, new cosplayers, new cosplay fans, because cosplayers get a strange following on Facebook, they, they join, they follow me to look at the pictures, and then they start responding to the articles on space or on GMOs or on bugs or on any other topic and that's that's my most exciting win right now. So so I have to ask what surly ramic are you wearing right now? Yes. Matt Art Lab. Yay! So so I, I'm being reminded by my phone that it is time for us to do a station identification. You are watching the CosmoQuest 24-hour hangout that decided it needed to be 32 hours long to 
fit in all our fabulous guests. Um, we are doing this to try and raise money to continue doing great science engagement. Uh, these are the people that we work with. We work with My Moon, hosting the My Moon CosmoQuest Hangouts, and Andy has been awesome because I I had personal difficulties last week and he just did it by himself and it's awesome to have these great collaborators that can can carry more than their own weight now and then. Um, we love working with My Moon. We are working to get more people studying the moon, learning about the moon, and engaging with squirrels. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> when we go to science fiction conventions, uh, Emily and Bug Girl are two of the people that we work with and that, that noisy Nicole is going to be at Convergence doing science outreach with. Noisy <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, 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 work with her, noisy is the correct you name. Call me noisy, uh, Donna misinformation. Yeah, we all call her noisy. <laughs> yeah. I have to force myself to call her Nicole. Um, and in faculty meetings. Yeah, um, but but right now we we are faced, uh, and Andy is as well. And as one of our partners, uh, we will be supporting his programs as much as we can. Andy and I and Nicole and our programmers, we're all potentially facing. Um, severe difficulties in making our budgets work because of reorganizations in how science education is funded in America and even if those reorganizations don't go through we face difficulties due to this gap in time while people tried to figure out where the money was kind of coming from and I know the folks who handle grants over uh, at the Lunar and Planetary Institute they thought that we had more time to figure this out. I thought we were fully funded for a couple of years and it turns out that that dark future that we kinda guessed was coming, well it decided to come a whole lot earlier. And right now we're looking for the bridging funding to help carry us into the future, to help get us to the point that we can bring in new sources of funding, whether it be commercial sponsors or funding from foundations. So we'd ask you if you enjoy the science that you're learning, the things that you get to participate in through CosmoQuest, the opportunities you've had to learn science at science fiction conventions and through YouTube, uh, sometimes from squirrels, bats, and bugs. Um, we'd ask you to donate. We are taking donations at CosmoQuest.org slash donate and currently the people watching right now, you are one of the least donating segments we've had in the uh -oh. 26 hours we've been doing this, 27 hours we've been doing this. There are no excuses. You need to go online. Um, don't get that coffee later today when you're driving home from your dad's house. Don't get that coffee tomorrow on your way. Well, no, no. Get the coffee on your way to work tomorrow. Do not get the junk food at lunch. Um, spend that money that uh, you have in your pocket burning a hole. Donate, donate it to CosmoQuest. No donation is too small. And no donation is too large. We haven't said that one before. We're going to have 100 just now as you were speaking. So. Well, oh, hot. Woohoo! It's my buddy. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Squirrel. squirrel. So I have to admit, I knew Andy for about a year strictly as Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, <laughs> it, that was just who he was in my head. <laughs> So as as you move forward, what sorts of I, I, we we are all part of the online science community. Uh, I know several of us got to go to science online this year. Hopefully, Andy, you'll be able to join us at science online next year. Um, what sorts of opportunities do you hope to continue to build in the future as we grow our science communications um, and science engagement uh, activities? <laughs> Nicole is dying here watching chat. Wow. <laughs> Did you ask him to speak in that? <laughs> yeah, I guess he's just going to sit there laughing well, at us. We're I, being laughed at by a squirrel. I can. How does that sound? Oh, it actually sound sounds fine. great. Yeah, oh, actually, okay. it's pretty good. So, so Andy, moving forward, what, what are the things that, that you're hoping that Chuck can accomplish? Oh, my gosh. Well, if we could get everybody to be just a little bit more nutty about science. That, uh, <laughs> that you see what I did there. Uh, well, what we're what we really want to do with my moon is just try to keep growing the uh, community on our website and get more people talking. Uh, we've got a blog; people can 
you know communicate with each other on. And of course, with our uh, webcast with CosmoQuest, just trying to <laughs> keep, <laughs> just trying to keep, uh, keep uh, people coming on. Try to keep Great bringing face. interesting speakers and interesting topics to keep telling people about what's going on in lunar science. <laughs> this makes me so happy. You have no idea. <laughs> I can't even tell you how hot this is right now. Yeah, yeah, it is. We suffer for our science. Oh my god! If that screenshot doesn't get people watching, I don't know. What will. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. So, so uh, BTL743, who has rejoined us, he was with us for a while yesterday, or she, I'm not sure which, um, <laughs> is asking. You guys got laughing gas pump. Working air conditioner. Well, we have to admit, in the middle of the night, Joe looked at the air conditioner, uttered the word "no." We heard the table saw, and a few minutes later, it was working. Um, so we now have a functional air conditioner. We are so much happier. And um, the laughing gas. No, we don't have laughing gas, but we have been eating Oreo cookies in large numbers. Oh, you can oh, teach biology man. with Oreo cookies. Yeah. And everyone went silent at the no, concept right, well. of geology with Oreo cookies. Um, okay, so, yeah, you got the plates. I can see that sliding yeah. plate. Yeah, yeah, you can do divergence. You you take the top layer off, crack it, slide them side by side, eat the one that moves the fastest. Mm. Ask a question so I can type. <laughs> uh, so, so and, and Emily, you do a whole different variety of costumes. Uh, have you found that people react better to when you are a hominid or a non-hominid? Um, they react better if I do not have a mask on, usually. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, um, masks are particularly children. Masks intimidate children. Um, yeah, they're they're scared of them. So that's true. That makes sense. I, I do try, particularly if I'm doing something with small kids, I will not wear a mask. I won't always wear my glasses either because sometimes it's just anything on your face makes them nerving. Um, mm -hmm. But what I've been trying to do recently, I'm I've started helping organize uh, science fiction and. Uh, and uh, steampunk conventions in Cincinnati so that I can, you know, sneakily add more science because that's how it works. Um, I've been trying to do science as a steampunk, and it's been interesting what people don't know about science. So, <laughs> please don't put external combustion engines on your zeppelins. Not a good idea. Um, so, so here, here's an interesting um, question, and I don't even know how to approach the answer, but I'd love to find a psychology major to help. We, we know from research that was done, I believe in the 1960s, that if you dress someone up in a lab coat, especially if it's an older white male, they are an authority figure and people will do what they're told if they have a man in a lab coat standing beside them. Um, if, if a man in a lab coat can intimidate people into actions and be believed, do you think that you can go the other direction through people in t-shirts and jeans and come out the other side and also have authority because you're a person dressed as a squirrel, a bug, a bat? Um, or do you think that people fear more pseudoscience coming from you? I, I Go bug. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say I don't think people know what pseudoscience is. Yeah, they don't. It it's not it's not a distinction for most people. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, Ever. a lot of people perceive science the way they get it through the media as pseudoscience because they see it as a constant change. So it's it's sound bites. It's little sound bites, and it's presented by people who appear to be authoritative. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have any context at all and it's not it doesn't because it lacks that context there's no way and we never train people at least in the US to really evaluate evidence um, but what they get is you know 
oatmeal is good for you. Oatmeal will kill you. Um, oatmeal is GMO. GMO will kill you. Um, I mean, it, it's this constant barrage of factoids and getting people to realize that factoids in science are not the same. Yeah. Um, especially when many times we teach it so that it is. Yes, that, um, that's a real problem. It's, and, and this is one thing I, I end up having to bring up in astronomy cast a lot because Fraser will ask me for dates, <laughs> specific names. I'm like, I remember concepts. The, the constants might change value over the years, but the, the equations will stay the same. That was a, a quote I heard from Ed Robinson uh, when I, I was a grad student. And, and the, this crazy notion that the constants may change, but the equations stay the same. What that means is over the years, we're able to re refine our values for things like the gravitational constant, the acceleration of gravity. Um, but the, the equation. I'm sorry, there's a giant squirrel nodding along with you. Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> the equations that we use to, to explain relativistic motion, uh, those haven't changed since they were defined. Um, lambda certainly changed the, the acceleration parameter for the universe. Um, so we need to teach people the concepts that allow them to, to do the back of the envelope calculations, to do the uh, reality check on the things that they hear and the things that people are trying to deceive them into learning. Um, and and what I love is is all three of you are focused on the concepts, the critical thinking, the how do you, how do uh, you you stay together on all the different things that are going on and keep your credibility with your peers when you know you're doing great things and you're dressed as a squirrel, a bug, or a bat. How do you get your your colleagues to respect what you're doing? You do not. Yeah, you don't. You have a colleague you don't like Kamala. <laughs> yeah, no. They, they and and you also don't care. Yeah. Um, because where I'm going is more important to me than having a bunch of academic douchebags approve of me. Yeah, my target um, audience yeah, isn't scientists. You. Never has been. <laughs> you know, a scientist around LPI are pretty supportive of what we do, so I think they kind of are like, if you guys think that's going to work, go for it. <laughs> And and this is the situation that Nicole and I have built for ourselves at, at SIUE is, is our center director is extremely supportive of what we do. And I know there's been a few times when she's looked at me and she's like, is, is your hair orange? And and there's the slightly <laughs> horrified look. Um, and then, then she's, a few minutes later, she's totally cool with it. So uh, in a few minutes, Google's going to kick us out of this hangout and we'll have um. to start up the last part. Um, so I want to give you guys each a chance to get in a, a one last final message, um, something about communicating astronomy in unusual, uh, astronomy, communicating science and in, in, in unusual and fun ways. So let's start with the squirrel. Yes. Oh, ah, yeah, I just say if if you're having fun, people know it, and I guess if they can see that you're having fun talking about science or doing science, then they're going to look start looking at it that way. <laughs> Is she just losing it because there's a squirrel talking? Well, that and there's a squirrel talking and his lips aren't moving. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's a cognitive dissonance going on involving the squirrel with the giant mouth and voice and no moving lips. <laughs> Is she going to be okay? Yeah, she'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we have four more hours. <laughs> Donate, please. <laughs> we are doing this. I mean, we are I, sacrificing our sanity to get you science. Um, yeah, I, can I make a brief ranty statement? Because yes. pretty much everything I say is ranty. I'm sorry. But uh, this one might be even more ranty than usual. Okay, seriously, it is freaking pathetic the amount of money you have raised. I thought you would be way farther along, and I am really disappointed in you. Y'all get audience. scolded. <laughs> no, I'm just I and and I understand. You know, I under, I'm, I personally am unemployed right now, um, and I am unemployed, and I have been unemployed or only part-time employed since 2011 because I got hit in an earlier round of budget cuts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I do not understand. Um, and I, if, after I get done with this, I'm going to tell you to all get off my lawn. Um, 
But I do not understand what's going on when we have to go online and beg to support science education. What the heck is going on? Um, you know, 500 teachers were laid off today in Chicago. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I value education and that's why I'm sitting up here in my attic, not in the fluffy suit, but still very sweaty. Um, and and trying to do what I can to support you. And, and I think if everybody that is watching or participated just gave a little bit, because I know everybody's broke right now, but just yeah. a little bit. And, and there may be a few of you that are doing really well that maybe could give a little more. That would be awesome. Oh. Um, because there are also a lot of people like me that are broke <laughs> <laughs> and can't do a whole lot. Um, so if you I can rant on the internet and get the word out. Yeah, because a lot of you have donated. I know a lot of you have been sticking with us through this, this show, and you've donated multiple times. So thank you. We're not yes. yelling at you. We promise. Yes. <laughs> anyone yeah, else no, watching actually, this enjoying Most of the people it. I'm talking to, I think, are not watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a larger thing of I don't know how to reshape the societal priorities. But it seems to me like education is one of – the most important things that we do. And you had a really nice talk with Phil about how this is how we go forward. Yeah. Um, we, we can't just keep doing the same stuff we've been doing. We need to learn new things and we need to develop new technologies. And speaking of new technologies, Google is going to kick us off any, any second. second. <laughs> I'm sorry, Emily. That's okay. <laughs> that I said everything but said. <laughs> there we go. Woo! So help and get us off our lawn too. Yes. <laughs> and, and help us bring in new audiences to get engaged and hopefully to maybe give. Um, and if your uh, corporation does uh, matching donations, if you know someone who needs a tax write-off, I don't know anyone who needs a tax write-off, but if you do, everything is tax deductible through Southern Illinois University Edwardsville. So thank you. Thank you, all three of you costumed, awesome human <laughs> beings. We love getting to work with you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at meetings uh, many times in the years to come. Everybody else, stay tuned for the next YouTube link. I will be sharing that out on the Twitter, on the event page. And, yeah, that. So <laughs> stay tuned. We'll have Four a new more one. hours. This is Four our last hours. segment. Woo! Thank you, guys. <laughs>